Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar with Jonathan Reeves, where he's going to take us through the uh, top 10 features. Is it top 10 you're doing, Jonathan? Yes, of Vectorworks Architect 2023, with which to supercharge your workflow. How exciting is that? I'm Tamsin Slatter. Uh, many of you have met me before, and I'm delighted to welcome Jonathan Reeves, who is one of our um, of our value-added resellers here in the UK. And I'm also delighted to welcome Dana, who's just joined the Vectorworks team this week. Hello. So this Hi, is part of her induction week. So over to you, Jonathan. Thank you, Tamsin. Well, welcome everybody. It's a pleasure to have another chance to deliver a webinar with you again. It's been a little while since the summer we did the last one, with I think me and Tamsin, or earlier this year. Um, so we've got lots to talk about. There's some very exciting new features coming up in 2023. Well, not coming up, they're already here, aren't they? They're more, here, they're here. There will be more coming up later in the year, no doubt, um, due to the new sort of release cycles that are coming in the future as well. Yeah. Um, we've got some excellent things to talk about. Um, how many people we've got, Tamsin? We've, we've still got people co coming in as we speak. We've got people flooding in still as we speak. Again. So we'll give a we'll give a little bit of a chat for a few minutes, um, and I think then we'll we'll get going very shortly. So um, while we're waiting, what we could do is just talk about the go to webinar. If anybody hasn't used go to webinar before, just sure. bear in mind that um, we will have you muted throughout the presentation. Um, just so don't worry about background noise. You can make as much noise as you want. Your kids can make as much noise as they want to just relax and enjoy the show. Um, and if you want to ask questions, please do so. Please pop them into the question panel and both Jonathan and I will be keeping an eye on that and we'll answer as many as we can. But if there's something that's particularly of interest, then we'll certainly discuss that as we go through the session um and and share share the answers with everybody um the other thing i was going to say is the top question we always are asked is is this webinar being recorded and the answer is yes it is of course of course it's recorded <laughs> of course um, it's being recorded absolutely yeah i i will probably repost it on my youtube channel as i normally do um and i may well also break down some of the content into smaller chunks because otherwise sometimes an hour is a big Big webinar chunk to watch on YouTube, isn't that that format? Um, occasionally, Vectorworks use it on the university. It depends. Well, not sure if you will with this one, but we'll see. You never know. I don't know what the plan is. So, see what the yep. plan is. so yeah, absolutely. Um, so, it looks like the chat's working. We've got a couple of people coming into the chat now, and looks like we've got uh, quite a few people coming in. So, I think probably. I think we're probably good to go, actually. Yeah. Good to go. yeah, definitely. So just to run through a bit of the format then, um, I've got some pre-recorded content, which is always nice because I can make that very sort of uh, professionally, it takes a long time to make. So I'm going to play a series of uh, little videos for you, um, but these are going to be fresh videos, all new content really. And we'll have a little pause in between, Tamsin, each time we, you know, for a bit of questions and answers really. Um, so each of those sections about 15 minutes or so. So I think let's jump in with the first section and we're going to talk about the home screen uh, just briefly because this is a you want to ask the poll first jonathan did you want to ask we should actually. Yeah, we would. let's do the poll we've got a quick poll quick all question right for you all let's just yep. run that now fantastic thanks Tamsin. let's see oh so ooh. yeah getting some answers definitely can you see the answers jonathan can actually, yeah, yeah, I can see. So that's fantastic. That's really encouraging. Wow, two thirds. That's amazing. So yeah. we've, still got, we've still got a third of people to convince of the benefits, and I think you'll enjoy hopefully today. Yeah. So that's we've yeah, got a second I question, I think, haven't we? We've got eighty-three percent of people have voted. So if you haven't voted yet, now last chance. chance counting down. I think that's it. I think that's it. So I'll close that one. So yes, sixty-seven percent of people are already on um, Twitter, which is great. There we are. There's the results. Um, and then, did you want to ask our supplementary question? We could do. Why not? We're still waiting a few people coming in. So absolutely, let's okay. do it. So, there we go. Yeah. So, are you working in two D only still? 
when you're doing 2D or 3D, 2D and 3D, should we say, like SketchUp types modeling, or are you working in what you might call a 3D and BIM workflow? Um, be really interesting to know. Oh, look at that. Yeah, 85% voted. So, same turnout at the polls. Interesting. This is very interesting. Yeah, fascinating. Okay. So, let's close that. Um, there you go. You can I'm see. Impressed. That's really good result for 2D and 3D. Um, it is. A little bit lower on the BIM, but that's that's yeah, twenty percent. That's pretty it's good. Still higher than two two D only, which is yeah, it's encouraging. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm sure after today you'll be raring to go with more three D and more BIM, hopefully. So on that right. note, I'm going to go for it. Thumbs in. I'm going to play. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera so that my beautiful face is not too distracting. I will do the same. We'll see you in a few minutes for another little <laughs> question and answers. But let's go with our first video. Just play this one and turn my camera off. Welcome to the top 10 features of Vectorwitz Architect 2023 to supercharge your workflow with me, Jonathan Reeves. Now, I wanted to start off with the obvious place to start, which is the wonderful new Vectorwitz 2023 home screen. So you'll notice that when you actually start the new software up, this is the kind of page that you're going to be greeted with. So I just want to kind of run through a few of the elements here and just make sure you're aware of everything that's on offer. So the first thing you're going to notice is a really nice section for all your recent files. Um, and I really like the way you kind of get a nice little big preview. Uh, if you do hover over them, you can see the path of where they're stored as well. And also uh, how long ago you actually accessed these files recently as well. So really nice little list view or a grid view, depending on which you prefer. And again, if you're in the list view, the size of them as well, which is a really nice aspect. Um, so that extra information is very welcome. So obviously, if you want to go ahead and open a file, all you need to do is simply one click and open the file. And you'll notice that if it's already uh, opened, that will basically just open up dramatically faster than previous versions of Actworks as well. Now at the moment, that was actually converting from a Vector's 2022 file, uh, hence it took a little bit longer. But you can see it's all opened up, looking great, and uh, this is definitely a project that I'll come back to during this presentation and talk a bit more about. It's for a new little eco home I've designed, and I'll use this as one of my example projects to talk about some of the things like sections a bit later as well. Okay, so once you're in the process, if you want to bring up home screen back again, You'll notice up in the top corner, there's a little icon. Just click this one to go back to the home screen. And then we are, we're back again. Okay, so as well as the recent files, obviously you can just click new and you can just open up a blank template, an office template or your office standard if you like. I've got a couple of mine in here. Um, the other nice thing is that you can also go onto the tabs on the side. So let's just talk about these um, after we've had a quick look at these other two aspects here. So the What's New section is a really nice little kind of place where you're going to get more up-to-date information on Vectorworks. And you can simply scroll through and just have a look at these different tabs. We'll be talking about things like Graphic Legends later in the presentation and the new wonderful Offset Edge Push-Pull enhancements as well. So this definitely gives you some nice impressions. And if you do click, this will link onto a video um, on YouTube or hosted by Vectorworks themselves. Now, if you click here, you'll notice that you can actually kind of link on to things like some sample files. Um, so that's actually quite nice. And this will take you to the Vectorworks University page. Um, you can see I've just clicked on it here and it's already taken me off to the Vectorworks University where I can learn a bit more about these features as well. But let's run through some of these other aspects. OK, so uh, if we go down to the second tab on the learning tab, what you'll notice here again is a link to the Vectorworks University. Um, the new features and lots of little nice did you know sections as well. So these are cool. These are very nice, sort of easy to learn, simple kind of little um, aspects to Vectorworks that will really kind of get you up and running quite quickly and rapidly as well. We've also got a link to the online help system here. But you'll notice that it also talks about things like up and coming events and also getting certified in the US as well. OK, so finally, we go down to the cloud services tab. Um, and if you've seen my other videos on this, you'll know how great the Vectorworks Cloud 
uh, with the new Unity viewer and the speed of it and everything. But it's a great way to stay connected with your clients and actually share your presentations and things like that online as well. But also, you know, you can collaborate with different people uh, using things like project sharing and um, those cap capabilities that not everybody knows about as well. So if I do click onto my files, um, that will basically just launch a browser and allow me to actually access my individual files themselves. So that's very cool. Um, finally, you can see it's just loading up the Vectorworks Cloud Services right now, having clicked on that. So as well as the Cloud Services, and here we go, here's my uh, Cloud Services latest file. Let me just bring the web browser across and you see a few projects that I've got in my cloud services and a few sort of presentations and things that I was playing around with as well. So if you haven't used the cloud services, it's definitely something I would encourage you to have a look at. As I say, I did make a video on this um, a few months ago, so check out my other video on that specifically. Okay, good. So finally, we go down to the message center and this is the kind of place where you're just going to get all the up-to-date information about Vectorworks. That's really cool. So obviously you can suppress some of those ones that you may have read already. Um, you can see some of those are coming through, quite old ones. But there's lots of really up-to-date stuff here. That's very cool. Okay, fantastic. Now the final aspect uh, is the customer portal. So I often get customers telling me, uh, how do I find the customer portal? Well, now it's easy. You just get it from the home screen. And from here, you can simply log in and manage all your licenses. And you can do things like generate legacy licenses as well. So uh, if you do need to generate older licenses for your Vectorworks or access all your licensing, make sure you go to the customer portal and then everything will be there for you. Okay, finally, you've got things like the community forum. And this is really nice. This is the Vectorworks community where you're going to basically find everything about the software and things like the roadmap are fantastic. This will talk about the, the future versions of Vectorworks and what's coming up in the future and the lots of nice contributions you can all make there. Excellent. So um, finally, we've got the tech support down at the bottom. Uh, hopefully you don't need that too often, but if you do, again, a nice, easy link to it to actually get that sort of technical support you might need from the different sort of locations like Vectorworks UK and so on as well. So I really hope you've enjoyed that little introduction to the home screen and I'm really, really excited to sort of use this. I think it's a great greeting and just gives back to it so users the place to look at everything in one single place, especially things like the customer portal as well. So make sure you make the most of it and let's move on and look at the next top 10 new feature. a quick look at the new edge offset tool so what I'm going to do is just kind of map out a very simple uh, building in front of you here just using the push-pull that Vectorworks has had for quite a while also I really love the new uh, automatic face that was introduced a few years ago in Vectorworks which just allows us very seamlessly to draw directly on those faces and add to the object so you can see if those of you who are using SketchUp already and you're kind of quite happy with that sort of push-pull workflow, Vectorworks actually has all of this with the kind of Vectorworks accuracy as well as the history-based modeling. So what I mean by that is you can double click, access that step of history. For example, you could duplicate that over there. And then when you come back out, both of those will be subtracted. Okay, now none of that is new, but what I would like to show you now is the new Edge Offset tool. So this is a very nice tool. It's got a couple of different modes. So what we can do, for example, at the beginning is select an edge and basically offset this edge. But if we do want to, we can actually hold shift down and select both edges. So you can see I can bring both of those down 300 mil and that then enables me to either push and pull either way. Let's go out, say 500 mil, just to create a kind of little roof projection there. So let me just do that again on this side. So we're going to select both those edges, just come down, say 300 mil, all with that nice accuracy, and let's come out, say 500 mil again. Fantastic. Okay, so you can see it's very easy to kind of create sort of volumes and modules, things like this. Now let's have a look at the next mode of the edge offset tool. I really love this. So what you can do is select an edge, but this time all the connected edges will also be offset. So you can see I can actually offset all of those together and actually push through and subtract into my project as I want to, all the way through. Now what's really nice is if I double click into the history, I can actually bring back the piece that was the subtraction piece. 
So if I'm clever, I can actually uh, cut that piece out and basically remove it all together if I want to. Let's leave it in and basically let's just bring it back again. Now I'm just going to use uh, not a new tool, but one of my favorite ones called the extracting tool just to extract that edge again. Okay, so I'm kind of finished with this now. And now I can use this, it's just a polygon, to basically extrude, say, uh, let's say 20 mil, just so I've got a nice big sheet of glass. So let's pop down and select some glass material if we've got some. So I'm just gonna go to my render tab, go to the texture, and basically search for glass. Let's see if we've got some available. So I can always use the search dialog here. Remember the resource manager is one of the nicest aspects of Vectorworks. It really is very seamless. So you can see we've got a kind of glass wall there. Okay, so let's just take a bit more look at this edge offset tool in detail. So as well as extracting uh, sort of planar edges here, so let's say that I just want to go minus 50 mil in there, and maybe I want to use my texture tool to put some solar panels in there. So I've got a really nice little library of some solar panels that I've created on my previous project here. And with a single click, you'll notice that I can kind of basically embed those into the roof there. Let's just do the same on that side again. So we'll click, we'll go in 300 mil. And again, let's suppress that, go minus 50. And we'll just get our texture tool and click. Good, so you can see the new per face texturing is also a very nice aspect of Vectorworks as well. Now, what if we've got um, non-planar shapes? Okay, so for example, let's just say there was a circle chopped through this wall here. So with the edge offset tool now, um, what you can actually do is select the edge offset, push out a little bit, and you'll notice that it's quite happy to deal with, let's do 100 mil, pushing out that kind of non-planar face as it were. So if I actually go in this way, let's sort of see if we can do that. Yep, yeah, okay, and then I can actually basically push this surface in here, generate a bit of create some glass in that little opening if I wanted. Now do remember, using this lovely tool here, I can select all my lovely materials, let's go for a nice stainless steel, and just essentially paint these surfaces with any kind of texture overrides that I would like on my model. So this is a very cool workflow. Uh, using the new texturing tools, and let's see what materials we want. Let's say I just want some nice brick on that surface there. Now don't worry, if the brick is the wrong way around, sometimes it does map incorrectly, that's very easy to sort. All you need to do is go over here to the texture overrides there, and often if you just auto-align plane, that will basically sort it out. I've still got the ability to change things like the scale as well, and also things like rotation as well is another option if I wanted. Just a little quick play with that, let's undo. Um, I just want to do a tiny bit more work on this texture tool and show you a really cool feature here. So I'm going to basically colour in these uh, roof panels here. Let's kind of slide round. I'm going to hold Control D, key down and spin, just so I can do that. Now, what I want to show you is if I go Command R, um, I've got this really nice sort of textures pack with all these lovely textures here. I can show you that a bit later. But if I want to select something from there, what I can actually do, which is very cool, is if I hold down the command key, you'll notice that I can actually replace a material. Now, if I do want to, I can also replace a material with command and shift. And basically, that will replace all of those materials, all of the gray is replaced with that single material. So I really, really love this feature. Let me just show you this on the uh, cladding as well. Let's go for, say, some nice dark timber cladding. So I hold Command and Shift down, and then when I replace that side, if I spin around to the other side, that will have been replaced too. It's a very, very cool feature. So I really love the new Texture Per Face tool, and it's definitely something I'd recommend uh, having a look at, particularly if you've got a nice sort of set of textures and things that you can use to create your project. Now, just on this Edge Offset tool, uh, let's just focus on this a tiny bit more. I just want to show you something really, really cool. So basically, if I've got a circle and I use the Edge Offset tool, non-planar as well as planar surfaces, so these are planar surfaces here, you can see no problem with kind of offsetting those. But for example, if I bring one up here, this is non-planar. This means that I can actually bring this surface out um, as much as I need or in. So it makes it very easy for you to kind of break that curve and actually kind of stretch it out. Now, I'm not really sure what I've modeled there, but it was just to show you how simple that is. And don't forget the wonderful tools, links like the fillet tool, 
and these are absolutely fantastic when you just want to basically round off and sort of fillet something off what I really love about these tools is this history based uh, adaptability where you can just type in new numbers and I really like the fact you can modify and highlight so if we click modify it steps back in to allow me to select these additional edges and then reapply to fill it so here we go a little kind of fountain or some other kind of feature but this makes really modeling and base texturing with Vectorworks very very rapid now uh, particularly if you've got a really kind of nice texture pack available as I say let's just go for this you can see it's just quite easy to basically paint these surfaces just like you would do in any other modeling software so it works really great both on non-planar and planar surfaces to really really rapidly create a kind of idea so what do you think guys uh, I think this is a fantastic new tool the edge offset tool and it's definitely one that I've been using quite heavily in my new workflow and I find um, it just sort of speeds up a lot of the processes that you could do before but it just makes it a lot easier I love the way you can kind of just tab in that accuracy and kind of use that Vectorworks accuracy to increase what we're doing but don't forget if you don't like it you can double click in the last step you can remove that last step of history and then back out again excellent so that's it for the edge offset tool but one of my favorite new modeling features as you know I love 3d modeling in fact it is absolutely brilliant but even better now than it was before just before we leave the offset edge tool um, I just want to talk a bit about some of the things I've been so fascinated with recently some really tool buildings that I've seen both in DZine and also uh, when I visited London for the construction computing award ceremony so I took a few nice photos and these were interesting um, so basically here's a couple of little projects that I've just been messing around with just to show you how easy it is to make sort of cool tool buildings with VectorWorks and I really just want to finish this off by showing you the edge offset tool in this context so what I'm going to do is basically go ahead and draw myself another tool building let's just sort of push and pull that up to the same kind of height and let's basically get my first of all my deform tool what I'm going to do is basically just spin that model around you can see how nice and easy that is to give it a bit of a twist and a rotation I'm also going to go on and give it a taper as well I really like this tool I think it's great just to give it a bit of a taper so that's kind of a nice little kind of interesting form for our project but this is really where I want to show you how amazing the offset edge tool is so let's go back onto this mode here and select the edge and just offset in let's say about one meter and let's just push back in again let's go minus one meter just to kind of push that back into the project and you can see this a bit more clearly if I actually kind of get my nice textures let's get my kind of uh, sort of panel type textures and apply that to that surface so look at that absolutely wonderful modeling and really good to develop these early stage concepts and I just love creating these tool buildings just for fun probably not projects that I'll ever be able to create let me just show you one more so to do that I'm just going to go to my home screen uh, really nice and you can see I've got a little project here and this is one that I created before so this was one again where I was inspired by a building that I saw in London with this amazing sort of facade and basically very rapidly was able to kind of model up this rather complicated facade just sort of good idea I think it's a great way to improve your skills just look around and see in the environment and just sort of see if you can emulate them and copy them so definitely something I'll be doing more tutorials on soon that was Whoa. great Jonathan. that was Thank cool I, I love the offset edge i just love it Thanks, and, and i really love I, I really loved your demo because i don't i think i've lost count of how many times in my life i've said i'm not quite sure what it is i've modeled there but anyway it's pretty cool <laughs> i mean you know it's just something that i'd really recommend to all my clients i absolutely love just playing around sometimes i just get a little idea and i can't help but go to bed to it, play around model it and it's just cool you learn a lot by doing that honestly um i do keep calling it the offset edge or edge offset it's a hard name to pronounce but whatever tool it's called it's fantastic yeah, um it's really intuitive that... as well and it's right at your fingertips yeah. You don't have to go somewhere else to do it it's great yeah all, all of the, not all of the things a lot of things you could do in a, another way but it was much more you know much more of a workaround and it just makes it very approachable for everybody uh, mm -hmm. to have a go and you know 
we saw that more people are using 3D and Vectorbox now. I mean, it was 70%. That's fantastic. So we've only got the 30% left to, to work on, I think. To work on, yeah. Yeah, definitely. 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 That's great. Yes. Okay, so what have we got next for us? We've got some next exciting things next coming. Um, a bit more on lighting and rendering. There's some fantastic new rendering capabilities in Vectorworks uh, these days that I want to talk about. Um, are there any other questions? Doesn't look like we've got too many. Uh, just no, now. I think we've just got some all oh, how cool type comments, which oh, obviously. Oh. <laughs> Great, everybody. I'm glad you're enjoying it. It was certainly good fun to make. And I, as I say, I love modelling these weird tall kind of skyscraper buildings. I'm forever looking at the magazines and when I'm in London. And I think, oh, how would I model that? And then I get home and I have a go. And honestly, as I say, it's a great way to learn. Because th the thing is, you don't always get the chance on real projects, you know, mm -hmm. to be as creative as you want to be. That's, that's the sad fact of being an architect, you know, day to day is good, but it's not always as cre creative as you might want to be deep down. There we go. Mm -hmm. That sounds sad, but no, it's a fantastic job. Okay, let's go for it. I'm going to play what my... What have you got next? Let's see. Lighting and rendering. Uh, oh. rendering and lighting, in fact. Let's go for it. Go for it. All right, we'll turn the cameras off. We'll see you in a minute. Don't forget to pop the questions in. So you can see I've set up a really kind of nice little kind of simple model uh, specifically for the purposes of this. And at the moment, I've turned off all the textures. Um, because I kind of wanted to show you a couple of really nice little settings that you can play with to get a few different render styles before we get a lot more realistic. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is uh, basically just show you that if I go to my shaded options, I've disabled absolutely everything at the moment. Okay, and if I disable the colours and the textures particularly, I'll just get this white card sort of model look. So we'll come back and look at these in a moment. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is just pop down into set lighting options. So this will set the lighting options for the layer. And all I'm going to do is enable the ambient occlusion. Now, ambient occlusion is a really nice little effect where you get this nice sort of soft shadowing in the corners where one edge meets another. We can play around with both the strength of the lighting but also the strength of the ambient occlusion effect, depending on the kind of um, kind of look you're looking for, really. I quite like sort of between 50 and 75% and between 50, 500 and 750 as an offset. So depending on the amount and strength you would like, um, that's a really, really sort of nice little option you can see. And it's very easy to sort of play with and vary in real time. So already it's looking a little bit more three-dimensional. Um, when we look at the drawing, uh, you can kind of make out what's happening a bit more. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll double-click our camera view and let's just render up the model. I'm going to go on and just turn on the ceiling. So I've made a, a ceiling here using the ceiling tool in a class. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool actually. And I can basically take my camera and get my walk through tools and walk around the model. So very easy and very responsive. You just want to kind of create this sort of white cardy look um, for the client without any sort of detail. Okay, good. Okay, so next let's go back to the camera and basically turn on a few other settings. So I'm going to go back to top plan. I'm just going to get my camera and physically move it to the location I want to stand. And uh, let's kind of just to begin with point it fairly horizontally. And all I do is double click to enable that camera view and I'm back in. I could save that one and basically that will save it with all the different rendering styles that I'm using. Okay, so let's go ahead now and start to look at the shaded options one by one. Now, of course, the very top one is basically textures. So if I enable the textures, you'll see the rendering, shaded rendering will re-render for a second, but it's not until I actually turn the colours on that we'll actually see the effect. Okay, so if you do have the textures on but no colours, you'll still basically have white. And that's because all of the colours of the attributes in the objects are white. If I did want to just show colour, then I could easily enable that just by sort of, for example, let's go down and demonstrate that. So I know for a fact if I go to my furniture class, let's click OK, type in the word furniture. Um, for example, if I go to furniture and go to tabletop, I know that that is white and I know that it's got oak texture on, but if I just want to bring the colour out there, I could just go brown. 
And you'll notice that now it will basically update with that color. Okay, great. So let's enable the colors as well. So it takes a second to re-render and that's how it's looking at the moment. Now, anti-aliasing basically reduces the pixelation on uh, angled edges and it doesn't make a huge difference to the speed, but it's definitely something that will increase the quality a little bit. So let's put it on. Drawing edges is something that you can do to make the drawing look a bit more kind of graphical. Um, so let's just click OK on that. I'll go to top plan and I think when I double click and refresh the rendering, you can see we've now got the edges on. Um, so basically, with the shaded edges on, let's turn them off again and just re-render. You can see we can turn them on and off. There they are, there they are off. And there they are on. So let's click OK to actually turn them on. Okay, good. Um, there is a few other options in there for the edges. If you do want to, you can kind of make them quite sort of thick and bulky, go for more of a kind of cartoony look as well, which looks pretty cool. Um, in fact, let's just save that view. Let's call that view two, just so I can kind of recall it. And I'll have a little drive around as it is. So if you want to go for more of a cartoony look, much more sort of graphical, that would work quite well, I would suggest. Okay, good. So let's go back into our options. Let's turn the edges back to one. And we'll turn those off. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is go to shadows. Now you won't see any shadows at the moment and that's because I've got no lighting enabled. So let's click OK and basically go to my layers. You'll notice that I've actually got two layers for lighting, a heliodons layer which I'm now going to turn on and that is basically just going to give me a little bit of sunlight coming through the window. You can just about see that um, but the sun isn't sort of penetrating very deeply at the moment. I could probably, let's just see if we can adjust that sun. We'll go to uh, the visualization palette to do this. Let's go to our visualization palette, which is here. And here you can see the heliodon. So let's right click and uh, select on the drawing. Okay. For select. Okay, so I've got it selected now. And basically, now the nice thing is I could sort of play through the different times of the year. You'll notice, of course, if I go to uh, things like January and February, the shadows are a lot deeper coming into the model. Um, and also what's nice is I can do solar animation and basically play through the different sort of times of the day just to get those sort of shadows coming quite deep into the model. So that looks really, really cool. OK, good. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is enable some lights which are inside. So if I go to the lighting you'll notice that I've actually turned on lots and lots of lights but I can't see them. Okay and the reason for that is I've got a setting up here in the options at the moment where all the lights are invisible. So if I do want to I could just show them in the rendered mode. Now it can be a bit distracting that's why this is there or you can say only in wireframe so it means when you're in wireframe view you can see them and they disappear when you're in shaded mode. So that's a really, really good option up in the lighting settings. If you don't know how to find these buttons, all you need to do is click here on this small arrow and just tick all of these options here and you'll find that some of those rendering options for the lighting are available. Okay, great. So with those lights selected, basically, let me just go back into wireframe. I'm going to click my wand tool or W on my particular workspace and I'm going to click onto those lights. Let's go back now into rendered mode. So I actually do have the lights selected. And what's really nice is you can see that I can basically play around with the brightness of those lights in real time. So here we go with it uh, sort of, if you like, selected. Let's turn it off. Let's click. And let's go for a um, slightly different brighter colour. Let's go for 100%. Takes a second for the lights to pop on, but that looks really nice. Uh, if we go up to, say, 200%. Look at that, that's really, really cool. So it really kind of brightens up the model. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go into our shaded options again. We've got our lighting coming on now, and we're gonna go for three things. We've got environmental lighting. So if we tick that, basically any light from the environment will impact. If we go for environmental reflections, suddenly we'll get a little bit of reflecting light coming in from uh, what environment we've got. But the biggest impact we're going to get is from object-based reflections. 
and you'll notice that now I've got these really nice reflections in the floor which I didn't have before. So this is something that Vectorworks have introduced now even in the shaded rendering mode uh, so we can just get a lot more kind of realism in our model. And look at all those lovely reflections coming off the silverware on the table and off the floor as well. So let me just disable that one more time. Let's turn off the object reflections and the environmental reflections. You know, this is where we were before. It looked kind of cool, but this is just the, the standard OpenGL. And um, look at the difference now when you enable these other options. And, you know, really very little performance on um, penalty on performance at all. So what a great improvement in terms of the shaded rendering. I really, really like these new improvements. OK, so this is very cool. It's looking quite nice. Um, let's go back to our save view. As I say, if you do record the save view, it will bring back all of the rendering styles. So let's turn on all of these options that we wanted before, apart from the edges. And let's turn that one off. OK, there we go. That's looking a lot more realistic. Let's now turn on the Heliodon. Look at those gorgeous reflections. But it's not really until we kick in the lighting that we're going to get that space lit nice and, uh, nice and brightly. So I'm really pleased with that. Let's save that view. View 3. And let's just kind of review where we started. We started with uh, this view, which was the unlit, sort of shaded mode, uh, using no textures and just the basic white colour. We then went on to look at the textured mode, but going for more of a kind of cartoony type style and using the edges to kind of represent that in a very graphical kind of way. And then finally, we've gone for much more realistic lighting without the edges, but most importantly, these wonderful new lights and reflections. And one thing that I did forget to mention earlier is Vectorworks now supports an unlimited number of lights in OpenGL or what, what we call shaded view now. Now, previously, the limit was only eight. So on older Vectorworks files, you would have only had eight lights in uh, shaded mode until you went to Renderworks. But now we've got an unlimited number of lights. In fact, you can see that by the fact I've got, let's click, 42 lights here. So pretty amazing and basically makes a huge difference. Um, OK, so just before we finish this section on lighting and rendering in Vectorworks 2023, I just want to talk about a project I did in collaboration with Fruition Design down in Torquay. It's a really interesting little project. Now, this was a project for the refurbishment of a cafe and Fruition are the designers. Um, and basically, they developed the majority of the model, but I did actually finish off a little bit of the rendering and did some twin motion visuals as well, which I'll show you in a minute. But while we're focusing on the Vectorworks rendering, I just really want to show you some really cool stuff here. So I'm going to go to my set views. I've got a couple of set views, see a nice external isometric view. Let's just hop inside. Now, the reason I want to show you this is because you can see it's a very detailed model with a bit more care and attention than the previous sort of tutorial. And if I jump through some of these set views, I just want to make a couple of points that A, you can sort of do these little animations between the views, which is actually very nice. And if you do want to, there's a way that you can actually slow that transition down. But just drop me an email if you want to know more about that. But however, look at the difference between this view and this one. OK, so basically we're going from um, having edges on. All I'm going to do is just show you how I created that. So I go to shaded options. Just once again, I turn on the environmental lighting. That has a big impact. Environmental reflections. Object reflections. So look at the difference now. The environmental lighting does definitely make things a little bit darker. Um, so if that's a look you're after. But look at the difference between the object reflections on those floors and look at these areas around the tables and chairs and things like that. So the object reflections and the environmental reflections make a huge difference. Um, the other thing that makes a big difference, of course, is things like the Heliodon. So I've just got a simple Heliodon shining a bit of light into the project there. Now, bearing in mind, these are just OpenGL, as it used to be called, or rather shaded mode now, as we are. The fact we can kind of walk through in real time with this level of quality is pretty awesome. And one extra little tip when you are in presentation mode, I really like the fact you can go up to this shortcut here, Command Alt Shift H, hide enabled palettes. And basically that will take you into sort of full screen mode. And I can kind of walk you around or the client round my design. Oh, look at these gorgeous reflections. I mean, some of it actually looks incredibly realistic. 
um, and those reflections on the floor, even in sort of shaded mode. And if you just spend a bit more time setting up the lighting and things like the materials, what you're going to find is you're just able to get some really great real-time sort of rendered uh, shaded views just using the shaded mode. And of course, beyond that, you have all of the other rendering options like uh, Final Quality Renderworks, Custom Renderworks, and of course the Redshift rendering as well. So check out some of my videos if you're interested in some of those rendering modes. But definitely, I absolutely love the level of detail and the speed at which can handle really quite complex models. But look at that amazing level of detail. And, um, you know, it really does come to life once you start putting in a bit of reflectivity and the environmental lighting as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this section on lighting and rendering and the new Vectorworks 2023. What fantastic improvements. And this has definitely improved my workflow massively already. So what we'll do, we'll just finish off with a few of the twin motion renderings. So if you do want to take things to the next level, I cannot recommend twin motion enough. And of course, that works extremely well with Vectorworks via the new Datasmith export or the Cinema 4D export. But we also have, let me just turn on my tools again, bring those back in. Um, you also have the Unreal Data Datasmith direct link. And that's something that I'm really excited about. Now we've got this direct connection with Twin Motion for real time rendering, where we can add people, trees, um, moving around sort of aspects and animation as well. So let's have a quick look at some of those to finish off this section of the tutorial. So as you can see, the real beauty of Twin Motion is the ability to animate absolutely everything, things like the people and the lighting, the time of day, uh, the weather and these kind of aspects. So I think that Vectorworks is a fantastic modeler and I really like the rendering Vectorworks, but the real time rendering that you're offered with Twin Motion or things like Unreal Engine definitely take things to the next level. So it's great that we've got this connectivity with the Vectorworks and Twin Motion and things like Enscape coming now as well uh, on the Mac as well as PC. Well, there we are. That yeah, was our amazing stuff. Second yeah. video. Yeah, do you enjoy that, Tamsin? Definitely. Yeah, I love the new shaded stuff. I think it's actually just astonishing, you know, what you can achieve. Um, I know yeah. one of our sample files for landscape, um, and it's incredible. You know, you, you can have like an evening uh, background, um, yeah. environment background, and then if you've got water, and exactly. light with a lit fog as well. It's just right. it's fantastic. I mean, look, I've been doing rendering my whole career since it was university many years ago. And I think I often show that first rendering that took me 72 hours for a little oh, kind of yeah. 40 by 40. I, really should, I might show it later. But you know, it's amazing to see where the industry is now. It's, it's a result of hardware and software coming together. And we are at a very exciting time. You know, I've always been excited about 3D, but I'm more excited than ever now. You know, you, we can all afford a piece of kit that will do real-time rendering. And now that Vectorworks has it built in, I mean, okay, it's not quite the same as Enscape or Twin Motion in that level or Unreal Engine. It doesn't need to be. You know, for design software, it's best in class, absolutely. Um, yeah. And you can knock out, once you get onto the final quality and now the Redshift, you can really knock out some great renders in that do it for sure Indeed. Yeah. yeah lovely, lovely so stuff. Again, another reason another reason to be working in 3d because instead of using sketchup why wouldn't you do it in that do it because that oh, why would you not really use the architectural design product of the year why cool. would you not award-winning we need to talk <laughs> about that don't we yeah yeah i mean um we won the award recently at the construction industry, Vectorworks, go on, Tamsin. Which one was yeah, that? Yeah, well, you were there, Jonathan. You were there. It was your night. You were there. <laughs> we'll share a photo in a minute. In fact, let me uh, share my screen and I'll show it at the end, actually, right at the end. Oh, so, what's we'll okay. the award? But I won an award and you guys won an award. So, it was a fantastic evening. And I yeah. think it just shows how great the product is these days. It's exciting. Definitely. Good. Do we have any questions? Well, or, or should we crack on? Yeah. Oh, uh, do we have, okay, so um, we've got a question of, are you going to show any Redshift visuals? Um, I wasn't going to show any today directly, but Mark, I know we've got a session booked in or soon. I'm doing a bit of training with Mark, so I will definitely show him lots then. Excellent. Um, if, he, 
if, I, if people are desperate I could show a couple but um, yep. yeah I was planning to show a few other things instead so yeah. so Come for on. anybody listening though know, Redshift is um, is an additional render engine available from Maxon which is one of our sister brands and therefore yep. It, it, and that's what RenderWorks is, is, has come from Cinema 4D, which is also yeah. Maxon. And so Redshift is an alternative and is it, we've got the second iteration of that now in Vectorworks. So. That's right. And, and actually behind the scenes on the sort of native render, rendering options as well, um, in 2023, we're more aligned with the latest release of the Cine, Cine Render, Cinema 4D, aren't we? So that's Absolutely. why you're seeing these big developments come in, things like that real-time shaded and good reflection yeah. stuff. My understanding is that that's how it will stay now. We will always be in sync with the latest release of the Cine, Cine Render engine. Very good. Very good. Okay, well, as I say, it's fantastic. The quality of the rendering built into Vectorworks is superb. As I say, I do I do love my twin motion and I like my Enscape too, but why not? You know, you've got to have different uh, products for different things. Indeed. Okay, so let's jump in now. We're going to go a bit more architectural now and we're going to look at some fantastic improvements to the basic stuff we all need as architects and designers, which is windows, doors and walls, that kind of thing. And if there's any time, I might even do a very brief live demo. Who knows, Tams, we'll see. Oh, how exciting. But oh, I don't know. Let's on next video. <laughs> Okay, so in this part of the presentation, I want to talk about some of the architectural features that are new in 2023 that have made some of the bigger difference to my workflow. And I'm going to use a real project that I've been working on um, for a small little kind of new well, kind of bungalow, really, uh, a single story dwelling. Um, but you can see it's quite a contemporary one. This is actually the option that got submitted for planning. Um, but I've also in here also got the original option. Um, so I like to do a few different options for the client and sort of, you know, the early stage of design. So we'll show you some of the drawings in a moment. Um, but let's get on to some of these new features. Now, I absolutely love this feature and it's definitely one that I was looking at from a few years ago. So let me just switch back to my Octet workspace. I was uh, doing some landmark training earlier today. And basically, I love the way that you can just switch the different workspaces in Vectorworks. Personally, I use Design Suite. Um, so that means I have Architect and Landmark as well as Spotlight as well. And I can just sort of switch back between those workspaces as I need to. And each one of those is an enhanced workspace that I've created over the years that I do share with my clients. So let me know if you're interested and I can help you with that. OK, so let's go to the building shell and look at the doors and windows now they look very similar but the big difference is you'll notice that there's now three modes not two so the first mode is just to kind of place in the wall as it would normally be let's just place one of those and you can see it will kind of drop into the wall the second mode is basically placed by reference points now it might be easier if i just flick to top plan to do this and you can see that what i can basically do is place a reference point and basically choose which insertion mode I want. You can just about kind of see the window there. And then when I click, I do get the opportunity to actually type in the distance. Okay, so that's really cool as well. But none of that is actually new. The new feature is the ability to interactively resize doors and windows. So if, for example, if I just kind of pop a new wall in here by copying this one here, let's just be a brand new wall over here just so you can kind of see how this works. So what I'm going to do is go to my uh, door or window tool. Let's go to the window first. And I'm going to go to this new interactive sizing mode. Now, if you're working in top plan, it's pretty straightforward. You just basically draw the opening size you want. And at the moment, I can see uh, my class is a bit wrong. But don't worry about that. That's just why they're coming out black. But you can see, basically, I've drawn those windows immediately using that class. Let me just change the class of those. Let's put them in my window class using my filter there and hopefully they'll change back to normal color. Brilliant. OK, so now I know that, let's actually uh, right click and basically go to activate class. So that will set the class to be that for the next one I do. OK, so watch this in 3D. So what I'm going to do is basically use my eyedropper tool. OK, on my workspace, I've double click E to bring up the settings. 
And I just make sure that I tick plugin parameters, which means that I can actually match the settings of, for example, this window here. However, when I go down to my window tool now, I can still use this mode. And you'll notice that very helpfully, it's actually got a line at sort of 2100 above Z height. So look at this, I can interactively draw windows using basically physical sizing in 2D or 3D. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Now if I do want to match them, I can just click the eyedropper tool and drop onto there to match those back to that style. Okay, but you'll notice that it's very easy if I want to click on the window I want to keep the style, but I want to make it larger. So essentially I can just drag and now stretch this window to whatever opening size I wanted. So it becomes very easy for me to kind of work with this particular style. Let's just do that one more time. I drop from there to there to match the style. And rather than having to type numbers in, which was the sort of old fashioned way, which is fine, you know, that works really well um, for accuracy. When you're designing, you sometimes just want to kind of interactively resize something. And you can do this in plan and elevation, obviously you can kind of match up and use things like multiple views as well. But how nice is this? It's extremely interactive. Um, so I really, really like this new feature. So <clears throat> let's have a quick look at this, um, for example, in terms of uh, doors. So again, let's just use a different wall type here. So I'm gonna go over to my uh, magic eyedropper and if you do want to know how you do this basically just right click and it's called create similar objects this one here and it'll give you a little dialogue which reminds you of the shortcut there so I can suppress that now the only problem is just watch out it does set the class to be the wall exterior which is fine and um, but do be aware of that for next time let's go and draw another little wall here just out in space Okay, so now I'm going to work my doors. So I'm actually going to set that class to door before I draw this time. And I think we'll just go doors main. Great, okay, so off I go to my door tool. <clears throat> Again, you can see the different modes here, but if I go to the interactive mode, you'll now see that I can basically just tab in, let's do a 2400 high door, drop it in, and let's do a normal 2100 high door and so on, and kind of lock into those different sizes. Now, in terms of the door type, as I've said, I can use my eyedropper tool to match and copy across. And that's extremely fast in terms of sort of matching the style of the door. But if I want to, I can now resize. So let's just do a couple of things. Firstly, I can drag it across in 3D, but I'd like this to be a really nice set of big doors. So I'm just going to drag it out to be, say, five or six meters. Let's go six meters. And I might need to make my wall a bit longer here. Let's just stretch that out. But you can see we've got a really nice big set of doors here. Now, what I can do now, which I also absolutely love, is go into the settings by double clicking or clicking on my options here. And essentially, now we've got absolutely amazing capabilities, not just for uh, sliding doors but also for folding doors and this is a really nice new feature that 2023 now enables you to do multiple panel sliding doors and you can see so let's have five leaves there and one leaf that side um, it's also very nice how you, what you can do is go to the folding door configuration and you can basically say what the passage leaf is here so i.e which door is it going to be the one that opens so there's all sorts of different options that you can have a look at um, and you can kind of change all the different swings and things. But let's just go ahead and do that and have a look at that sliding door. Now, I really love the fact you can also change the opening angle. Now let's just flip it around so it's opening the other way. Ah. So extremely easy. Um, a final killer feature that I really love um, is the fact that you can actually show this open in 3D. So just to go to the visualization section, as well as showing it in a uh, plan, you can just kind of show it open as well. Let's just show that open. Can you see those sliding doors? So there's a lot of flexibility with both sliding doors now and folding doors. So 2022 was all about the fold uh, sliding doors. 2023, the bifolds and folding doors are absolutely incredible. 
So this will make a big difference. Uh, by the way, it's not just uh, folding doors, but it's also windows as well. So if you do go into general settings, you'll notice that you've got a whole bunch of folding windows. And again, really same capabilities as you have with the doors. Also, if I go to 3D and show them open, let's just do 45 degrees, click OK. So you can see there they are being shown open in 2D, but also in 3D as well. So really fantastic capabilities for the interactive doors and windows, but also beyond that, the folding doors have been massively extended. And this is something that I use all the time in my projects. So very, very excited. Um, so what I've actually done is I've also got uh, another design option here called the final option. And this was actually the one that the client went for. They just really needed um, a sort of single story building in the end. Um, but they did want to see the sort of two story option at the beginning. And you can see I've got that really nice new rendering that we talked about earlier on uh, turned on as well um, with the new sort of reflections. So that looks really cool. But if I actually scroll through a few of the drawings, uh, let's kind of start with the elevations. You can kind of see the quality of elevations that I'm getting from my Vectorworks model. Um, I really like the fact you can now integrate things like the uh, trees and there's some wonderful new trees available, not just the render mail plants, but also the lobe work plants. And these are really worth looking at in terms of basically you can click on the plants and you can see that I can go off to the web browser and download a huge variety of really high quality plants and trees now straight into my Vectorworks. And these are, I think, for Architect as well as Landmark. Um, so those are good and you can have different levels of quality. So you can see I've got some really nice site sections in the project and I really love doing sort of things like isometric views as well. Now the next new feature I did want to talk about was how to cut sections and how rapid this is. Previously these could take a little while. So I just want to show you how cool this is. Um, I've got a blank sheet waiting. And let's go back to, I'll tell you what, we'll go back to the bigger model, the original design. Okay, and I'm going to go to the wonderful clip cube, this icon up here. Now, if you don't see that, just remember to turn that on up in your settings. So let's go forward and see if we can cut a really nice sort of section through our model. And I love this clip cube, uh, really nice quality. So let's go, there we go, through this lounge area and those doors. So ready, let's click, create section viewport. And let's just put that onto my blank sheet here. I think all the settings are probably okay as they are. I'm just going to go for the defaults and let's click OK. Just watch how fast this is. Literally, bang, it's done. Now I've got a bit of sketch rendering on there, so let's just turn that off. I quite like it though. Let's turn that sketch rendering off and let's blow the scale up 1 to 50. And let's also do something else. Let me just regenerate, see, show you how quick this is. So basically the multi-processing for sections is now amazing. Absolutely superb and really, really quick. But if I go into my advanced properties, I can now turn on all of that lovely detail that I've actually got in the, the model if I wanted to. And we'll go ahead and click update again. So now you see not only have I got some of the detail for the walls and the roofs and things like the gutters and so on, um, those sections are generating extremely quickly. So let's just pull off another copy. We'll go down to a fantastic command, which is just basically reverse direction. And there we go, reverse direction there. And we'll click update. But you can see these sections are really available to be pulled off in seconds. So I really love sections. Um, I use them quite a bit, not just for internal views with a bit of rendering. Um, I really like perspective sections as well. So definitely something that is now up to six times faster in Vectorworks 2023 with multiprocessing capability. And basically, even these longer ones, you can see um, once they get going, once they've done the geometry, they start to render. Uh, you should see a very small delay, but I can, well, that's so fast, it's done. But if it was a longer render, I could actually carry on working. So they render in the background now, which is the key thing. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about in the new release of Vectorworks 2023 is the wonderful Graphic Legends tool. And you can see, here's an example of a door schedule that was generated from this project very, very rapidly. So I'm gonna show you how this works and how easy this is. 
So I'm just gonna basically double click onto a blank uh, layer here. I'm gonna go to my new graphic legends tool, which is available from the Dims and Notes palette. Um, so let's select that tool and you notice that there's already uh, a bunch of different kind of graphic legend styles that you can apply. Um, so we've got some different sort of categories, symbol based things, things like equipment and furniture legends as well, interior doors, all sorts of stuff. Let's just go for uh, a new door legend. So we'll double click. Now it's telling me that it's already in the file. Um, so let's rename this one. Uh, let's call this one new one. And basically I'm just gonna click. Now it must go onto a sheet layer and you'll notice immediately it will draw some doors. Um, so it's only taken three different door types at the moment. So it looks like it's only taking the external doors. So all I need to do if I want to edit it is go to either edit style or unstyled and then edit it. Let's go edit style. And you notice the little dialog pops up. So we can do quite a few different things. Uh, let's just change the scale to say one to 25. Let's also go to the most important thing, define the source. So what this means is you can basically define the source of what you're looking for. So type is door, uh, field value schedule is true. And let's remove that one there, case opening. I will also uh, click OK. I'm going to turn off the reporting by because otherwise anything with the same label will be reported. So I'm just going to type in a value of none there. So I should find if I click OK, it may well report all of the doors in the file. So just give it a second while it updates. Here we go. You can see it's recalculating uh, 64 doors, I believe. And wow, there is a lot of doors. OK, so you can see all of them beautifully presented there. Let's filter this a little bit more. So let's edit the door, go back into the legend, and let's redefine uh, an additional value. So layer is, so this is very cool that I can actually limit it just to that one layer. Um, so I'm gonna limit it to my ground floor layer. You can see the number of objects meeting that criteria has now dropped. So we'll click okay and okay again. Hopefully it will kind of, yep, it's updating down here, look. Just recalculates. Um, so I've got a much sort of smaller number now. Okay, so let's drop down the scale to 1 to 50 scale. Now these are actually two scale, which is wonderful. And you'll notice that basically you've got some really nice definitions of things like the uh, dimensions as well, as well as the labels. Now there's all sorts of other things we can do. So just for a moment, I'm going to unstyle this object so that I can actually kind of tap in um, and fiddle around with the legend. So if I go into the legend image, here is the dialog where we can change things like the rendering. So let's change that to a rendered view. Um, and if I really wanted, I could also put it into sort of three dimensional view as well, which is quite nice. Um, let's keep that as a front view for now. And what I'll do is I'll add a plan in as well. So to do this, um, just let that recalculate for a second. You'll see those views rendering up nicely. Okay, so if you want to add more uh, cells, what you actually do is you define the cell layout. Okay, so at the moment, here is the cell layout, and this is where the picture comes in, and this is the field it reports, the ID. So all you need to do here is drag down an additional copy of the uh, picture, if you like, and then define what that image is. Okay, so here, instead of the front view, I'm going to go to top plan. Okay, and that's cool. Um, click OK. So we'll go back in and see what difference that's made. It redefines the graphic legend for us. Uh, and now you can see we've got this nice preview of the plan as well as the elevation. Uh, in theory, there's no reason why we couldn't have the 3D in there. The great thing is with these, they're all sort of resizable. Um, obviously, if the cell is a fixed size, sometimes you just need to drop that scale down and I think we'll go for like let's say 75 scale hopefully that will fit nicely on our sheet so this is absolutely fantastic for things like doors and window schedules um, you can see a very very rapid tool but this is just the beginnings of the kind of things that you can do with this tool um, here was one that I did earlier for the walls you can see but things like doors and window schedules absolute time saver and really really flexible in the way that you present these so automated 3d um, modeling gives you basically the schedules as well. Brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed that section. I think that's a really nice new feature.
So, what do people think of the new graphic legends and interactive window and door resizing? Well, I think they're amazing. I, I just, well, they're, they're very cool. I also, I love the folding doors. I think that's great. Yes. Um, but graphic legends, the the potential with those is just incredible. And I, I kind of liken them to, you know, data tags were a major, major step forward. Um, and I, you know, I'm always encouraging people stop using the built in labels and use data tags. Um, but yeah, graphic legends, incredible. Nice and easy and very quick to understand, but within it, a lot of depth as well. And, you know, I think there's going to be people out there who go quite programmy and get it to all sorts of clever reporting yeah. as well. And of course, once you've set them up, once you've created the style, you've got that and yeah, you've got you can drop that onto any drawing. And there you are. Yeah. Yeah, it's a massive time to have it. I mean, the old scheduling is good for the data and getting all the sizes and the, the width and yeah. the height. That's all still there. But it, the little image that you had before was not a graphical legend image. It was just a, a bitmap image, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Now we've got the best of both. Just, you know, creating a list of line types that you've used, just pulling out a class uh, yeah. representation is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think there's incredible amounts of things you could do. It'd be lovely, actually, if people would post these on the forum. There was a space where people might share their own sort of graphical legends that people could, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bring in. There we go. Oh, yeah. Well, that's. I've got a couple of more things I could show, but I sense that we got to three o'clock quite rapidly already, and I know people have got Wait, lots to do. Nice. Oh yes, we have. Okay. Um, well. Yeah, it's been you really just enjoyable. Talk about your project quickly, Jonathan, because I, I, you know, you did win that award, and I think we should, we should certainly acknowledge that because, um, yes. yes, it's great. Vectorworks won an award in the Construction Computing Awards, but Jonathan, you won an award yourself. So, just yeah, thanks, thanks, Tamsin. Yeah. I appreciate that opportunity. So, yeah, so I'll just mention two two things very briefly. Um, I would love to sort of see you coming along to my YouTube channel if you're not already signed up. I've got over 200 videos on there. I'm nearly at 13,000 subscribers now, but I will be reposting this webinar on there if you want to have another look. So a little plug for my YouTube, which I love doing, as you can tell. Um, and here's the uh, little kind of picture of the awards. I've had a couple of glasses of wine by then, Tamsin's, but, you know, it was certainly a fun evening. And then here we go. Here's the Vectorworks team with... Uh, Adrian and Lynette and everybody else, and Harvey, at winning the Vectorworks Award. So it was a really fantastic award. This was the award-winning project. Um, it was basically AR, VR project of the year for, um, it's kind of like a, a sort of a eco holiday home camp on a site up in Rutland. I, I was working with a designer, Ashley Miles, who's a really good designer. Um, I did all the modeling in Vectorworks using site modeling and Vectorworks modeling, okay. BIM modeling for the for the pods, if you like. And then the final rendering done in twin motion. Um, but what we also did was we put some stuff onto the Vectorworks or Twin Motion Cloud, which people can visit. It's out there. Let me know if you're interested in the visit. But you can also plug in a headset or look at it on your iPad and it looks fantastic. So yeah, it was a really fun project to work okay. on. Very, very proud to to uh, win the award as we're back to it. Congratulations! Think. Yes, I think it was a great night. Um, it my was. evening was picking everyone up from the station yes. very, very the late. And strikes really messed yeah. it up a bit, but as ever, you know. But so. such is life. Such is life. So yeah, it was. It looked like it was a great evening, and I know. It was fun. Yeah, it was exciting to win the awards. So yeah. Well, final thing to say is thanks every, to everybody for joining. Um, I know you're all busy, but it's, it's very nice to sort of see so many of you here. Um, please reach out to me if I can help with any teaching and training as ever. That's my thing, or Vectorworks advice. Um, and thanks, Tamsin. Always great to uh, link up with you. And we, I, I really enjoy doing these webinars with you. It's fun. Great. Well, thanks ever so much for all the time and effort that you've put into that. Um, really nice to see to see those examples. And yeah. Please do reach out to Jonathan if you need any help. Thanks well, again, Jonathan, and see you soon. Thanks, everybody. I almost want to say Merry Christmas, but we're not quite in December, so not I'm quite. not going to quite say it yet, but not you know. Quite. All, right, All right, see you soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Bye-bye.